the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Fifth Salutation By the intercession of St. Michael and the Celestial Choir of Power, may the Lord preserve us from evil and, fail and falling into temptation. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Sixth salutation. By the intercession of St. Michael and the celestial choir of virtues, may the Lord protect our souls against the snares and temptations of the devil. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Eighth Salutation By the intercession of St. Michael and the celestial choir of archangels, may the Lord give us perseverance in faith and in all good works in order that we may attain the glory of heaven amen our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Ninth salutation, by the intercession of St. Michael and the celestial choirs of angels, may the Lord grant us to be protected by them 
in mortal life and conduct in the life to come to heaven. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In honor of St. Michael, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In honor of St. Gabriel, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In honor of St. Raphael, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In honor of our guardian angel, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. Amen. For Pope Francis and all of his prayer intentions, our Father, who Lord art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In intercession of heaven-bound Camino al Cielo, for the pro-life movement, and for all those who are involved in this ministry, and those who are serving for that event, the artists who are to come from different cities and different states, O oh Lord. May you protect them in their travels. May you protect every ministry that said yes to, to this unity, O oh Lord. And for Zoele as well, who will be there to, to come together in unity with other ministries for this pro-life event. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O glorious Prince St. Michael, chief and commander of the heavenly host, guardian of souls, vanquisher of rebel spirits, servant in the house of the divine king, and our admirable conductor, you who shine with excellence and superhuman virtue, deliver us all from evil, who turn to you with confidence and enable us by your gracious protection to serve God more and more faithfully every day. Pray for us, O glorious Saint Michael, Prince of the Church of Jesus Christ, that we may be made worthy of his promises. Almighty and everlasting God, 
who by a prodigy of goodness and merciful desire for the salvation of all men has appointed the most glorious archangel, St. Michael, prince of your church, make us worthy, we ask you, to be delivered from all our enemies, that none of them may harass us at the hour of our death, but that we, but that we may be conducted by him in your presence. This we ask through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael, the Archangel. St. Michael, Michael, the Archangel, Archangel defender, defender of in us battle. in battle. Be our, Be our protection, protection against, against the wickedness and snares of, of the devil. May, May God, God rebuke him, we, we humbly pray. pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Jesenia and Sister Daniela. Uh, as we move forward through the night, I just want to remind you guys that we do have some snacks in the back if you guys want to help yourself. Okay, so make sure you do that if you need any water. Also, uh, we don't have Jesse tonight in our solar van, but we do have uh, somebody who's really amazing at what he does in the piano. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, Give the stage to um, Marcus. I was just talking to him too, Marcus, uh, brother Marcus, who's gonna delight us with with his voice and the piano as well. So let's let's get up for some praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Let's stand on our feet as we uh, just open our hearts to God and as we surrender our hearts to God and allow Him to move in this space. Amen. What we're going to start with is just asking God to open our hearts and open the eyes of our hearts so that we can see him clearly. Uh, there's so much distraction in the world. And so I think to start us off, we just need to say, God, open the eyes of my heart so that I can see you, see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour to see you let's cry out holy say 
Holy, 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 all of your goodness. Holy, 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 all of your grace. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Say, open the eyes, say, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yes, God. I want to see you. Say, open the eyes of my, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Say, I want to see you. See you high and lifted one more time. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. So pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Let's cry out holy thing. Holy, holy, holy. God, you are holy, holy. Perfect in all your ways, holy, 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 I want to see you. Say, holy, 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 I want to see you. Let's lift it up one more time. Say, holy, 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 holy. God, you are holy, holy, holy. Yes, you are holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. So open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Because you are our hearts. One desire, thirsty for you, thirsty for you, you are our hearts. One desire, only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Try that with me. Say, you are our hearts. You are our hearts. One desire. One desire. Thirsty. Thirsty for you. God, we are thirsty for you. You are our hearts. One desire. You are our hearts. One desire, and only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Well, only you can satisfy. Try that again. Say, you are our hearts. You are our hearts. One desire. We're thirsty for you. Thirsty for you. Say that again. We are thirsty. Thirsty for you. You are our hearts, one desire. You are our hearts, one desire. Only you, only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. So dwell here, dwell here. Move whatever's in your way. Whatever took your place, dwell here, dwell here. Move whatever's in your way. Move whatever's in your way. Whatever took your place. Whatever took your place. Say, dwell here. 
dwell here, dwell here, dwell here. Say, move whatever's in your way, move whatever's in your way, whatever took your place, whatever took your place. So dwell here, dwell here, move whatever's in your way, move whatever's in your way, whatever took your place, whatever took your, say dwell here, dwell here, God we need you to dwell here, move whatever's in your way, Move whatever's in your way, whatever took your place, God. Whatever took your place, dwell here. God, we need you, dwell here. In our hearts, God, move whatever's in your way. Whatever took, whatever took. Say that one more time, say dwell, dwell here. God, we need you. To dwell here, move whatever, move whatever's in your way, whatever took your place, whatever took your place, dwell here, Holy Spirit, dwell here, move whatever, move whatever's in your way, whatever took, whatever took your place. And I love this part. It says, our hearts are raised to you. We wait on you. Will you come in the room? Will you come in the room? Our hearts are raised to you. We wait on you. We wait on you. Will you come in the room? Will you come in the room? Will you come? Will you come in the room? Our hearts are raised to you. We wait on you. We wait on you. Will you come in the room? Will you come in the room, God? Will you come in the room? Our hearts are raised to you. We wait on you. We wait on you. Will you come? Will you come in the room? Will you come in? Say, will you come in the room? Will you come in the room, God? Will you come in the room? Will you come in the room? Will you come in the room? In our hearts, God. Will you come in, in our minds, oh God? Will you come in the room, in our hearts, oh God? Will you come in, in our hearts, oh God? Will you come in the room? We invite you in this place. Will you come in the room? Will you come? Will you come in the room? 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 So dwell here. Dwell here. Move whatever's in your way. Move whatever's in your way. Whatever took your place. Whatever took your place. Dwell here, God, we need you. Dwell here, move whatever's in your way. Move whatever's in your way, whatever took your place. Whatever took your place, dwell, dwell here. We open our hearts, dwell here, fully surrendered. Move whatever's in your way, whatever took your place, whatever took your place, dwell here, oh God, dwell here, move whatever, move whatever's in your way, whatever took your place, say dwell here. If it's resentment, God, dwell here. If it's jealousy, oh God, move whatever's in your, 
if it's pride, oh God, whatever took your place, so dwell here. We need you, God. Dwell here. Move whatever, move whatever's in your way. Whatever took your place, whatever took. Now just you say it, say dwell. It's just between you and your father, say dwell. Oh, whatever, move whatever's in your way. Whatever took, whatever took your place. God, dwell here. Our hearts are yearning for you. Dwell here. Move whatever, move whatever's in your way. Whatever took your place. God, move whatever's in your way. Whatever took your place, move whatever's in your way. Whatever took your place, move whatever's in your way. Whatever took your place, just dwell here. Dwell here, move whatever's in your way, whatever took your place, dwell here, dwell here, move whatever's in your way. Whatever took your place, oh God, we ask of you to come into our hearts, come into our hearts, saturate our hearts, oh God, I give myself away. Oh, God, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, God, I give myself away so you can use me. Can you say that? I give myself away. I stand here, surrender to you. I give myself away so you can use me. So you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, God. I give myself away. So you can you if that's your prayer, say it again. Say, I give myself away to your will and to your way, oh God. I give myself away. So you can use me. I give myself away. Oh give myself away so you can use me see my life is not my own to you i belong i give myself i give myself to you yes See, my life is not my own. To you I belong. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself. I give myself to you. I give myself to you. Say, my life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you I give. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself, I give myself to you. Father God, my life is not, my life is not my own. To you, to you I belong. 
I give myself, I give myself to you. Say it again, my life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you I belong. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself. I give myself to you. Give myself to you. One more time, love. Life is not my own. To you, to you I belong. I give, I give myself, I give myself to you. So we give ourselves away. Oh God, I give myself away. So you can use me. I give myself away. Right here in this moment, I give myself. I give myself away. So you can use me. Say it again. I give myself away. Oh, oh God. I give myself away. So you can use me for your glory. I give myself away for your glory and your glory alone. I give myself away so you can use me. Oh, 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 myself I give myself to you oh Jesus my life is not my own to you I belong I give myself I give myself to you oh God my life is not my own to you I belong, I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own, to you I belong, I give myself, I give myself to you. One more time, say my life is not, my life is not my own. To you I belong, 
I give myself, I give myself to you. Oh, this is my commitment. My life is not my own. I'm standing here committing to you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh Lord, I give myself away so you can use me. Hello, hello. That's a round of applause for Marcus, everybody. And just like just like the praise and worship he said today, he he gave himself to God and he shared those talents with with us tonight. And I gotta say, I I, I feel thank you for sharing with us, Marcus, for having us. So as we move through the night, I just want to remind everybody again: there's water in the back. There's some cookies, too, that are fresh made. If you guys want to help yourself, do it now. Uh, because as we move forward, uh, one of the key things is we are a nonprofit uh, ministry. So we do depend on funds to, to run the events. We do. So we have Deacon here uh, with a box that says love. <laughs> so if you guys can donate, if you can, pray for us and share our page and our website and our resources with your friends and family. If you can help, prayer, anything we do. <clears throat> and tonight is a very special night. We do have a very special guest from Incorrupto. Uh, her name is Esmeralda Torres. She's here to change, to share with us her testimony. So testimony is one of the most to me, when I share my testimony, it was, a, it was a sign of love towards my brothers and sisters. It's being open-hearted. It's, it's opening a part of your life that many people don't know, right? So her, her, her topic for tonight is pray, hope, don't worry. And I'm pretty sure we're all very familiar with that saying, but it must have something really special meaning for her, for her to choose it. So I want everybody, if you're sitting in the back, to come forward. And without further ado, uh, Sister Esmeralda. Thank you. Before we start, well, we already prayed. But I do want to invite the Holy Spirit to come so that your ears that are listening can open up to the Lord so that your heart can continue to heal so that the Holy Spirit can guide you to the calling that you have. Amen. Okay. Well, good evening. Um, my name is Esmeralda Torres. Um, I'm here to share my testimony and a little bit of not a little bit, the hope that God has placed in my life and the reason why he has taken me through such a journey in my life. One thing I do want to start 
with saying, well, let me present myself. So my name is Esmeralda Torres, and for the glory of God, I've been um, in the walk, and the Lord has been in my life for 25 plus years, so a little more than three-fourths of my life now. Um, and I'm a mother of four and a grandma of two. Jaden is three, and Jaslyn's going to turn one. May God bless them right now where they're at. Um, and, the, and I'm currently um, serving in a ministry, a, a platform called Incorruptos, so follow us on IG. Um, and I'm very thankful for the invitation to be here. One thing I want to make very clear is that um, my testimony, my life story is as important as yours. The only reason why I'm standing here is because I was asked to come <laughs> and stand here. But in reality, your life story, your testimony, your walk as is as important as mine. It has no further value. I want to make that very clear. And for the glory of God, too, everything that I'm going to share, um, for the most part, um, has been healed for the glory of God. So um, with that being said, I'm going to share, um, of course, because I'm older now, I'm a grandma, I have a lot to share, all the mercy that God has poured in my life and that he continues to pour. Um, so I'm going to go bits and pieces. I'm going to try and be brief because if not, I'd have you here all night, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, well, I will start with, um, I'm the oldest of two, of two siblings, and my parents migrated, immigrated here from Mexico, like many of you guys, and um, my journey began with my parents leaving me in Mexico, because when they came here, they couldn't, they could only bring one, and of course, they were bringing the little one, which was my brother, so that's where my life story began and the journey of, we could say, pain and anxiety and all kinds of, unfortunately, abuse like many of you guys have experienced, no? And like I said, for the glory of God that is healed and placed at the feet of the cross. Okay, well, for the glory of God, my parents, like many of your parents maybe, or grandparents, my parents got uh, married very young. My mom was 15. My dad was 21. So back in their pueblo, in the rancho, from where I'm from, that was the norm. So, you know, you get married young, you have a lot of children. Um, because my dad um, is from a large family of siblings of 16, um, there was a lot of things going on. And obviously, growing up, he didn't know any better. So um, what I'm going to share, like I said, has been healed and is placed at the foot of the cross. Um, okay, so my when I'm going to start with when I was a little girl, unfortunately, my upbringing, upbringing was a very dysfunctional one because my dad, when they when they migrated here, of course, they were looking for a job and struggling. But my dad was a very abusive man. My dad, um, all I recollect, literally from when I was a little girl, was my dad beating up my mom, like submerged in blood. And um, actually, one time he almost killed her. He had the gun to her head. And she was, I woke up, I don't know what time it was in the morning, but she was submerged in blood and he was going to kill her. And the only reason why he didn't was because I got up and I got in between them where he had the gun at her. And I looked at him and I told him, don't dare to do anything to her because I'm going to hate you. And I believe I was five. And he dropped the gun and he ran out. Um, mind me, I'm not going to get into detail, but that was literally my upbringing. My dad was a raging alcoholic where he would drink a six pack every single day before even going to work. And he was addicted to cocaine um, to the point where... Um, he would, I was like a very um, expert on making these little balls of paper to put in his nose. Like he would be like, Miha, come. And I would just 
put him in his nose because um, he had so many bursted blood vessels. Um, so he would have bloody noses literally every day. And um, my anxiety now that I, that the Lord has healed me and has taken me, now I understand so many things of my life and why I have been or I was like I was. I learned very young age to take care of my brother. I was the caregiver because my mom was um, looking for my dad, leaving, some, leaving us in the car at one, two in the morning, looking for him at bars, looking at picking him up from the streets. And this was my life. And my dad um, was very abusive. Um, when I was thinking of what God wanted me to share, right? Um, I couldn't honestly not think of one time that I could say that I was happy as a little girl or that I spent time with my dad or that my dad, that I have any recollection of any good memories with my dad. Um, it was always my mom crying and so many healing has happened. Of course, and this is, these are the signs of anxiety of, of fear um, at the age of four, five, six, I would wet my bed. I just see, and my dad would, when I would wake up, I would try and change real quick because he would beat me because, you know, I just, it was so much anxiety. And I remember just all I would hear when I was a little girl was my dad would say, tu lloras por todo, lloras hasta por ver un perro mear, that I would even cry for seeing a dog pee because there was just so much hurt and build up in my soul as a little girl, you know, and so that perspired, you know, and the beatings, the just kept on getting worse. And I think um, my mom was getting a little bit tired, you know, and figuring that that wasn't the life that she wanted for my brother and myself. So um, she gave my dad an ultimatum and she was looking for God. And for the glory of God, when I was 11, they went to a marriage encounter and I have to say, this is how God works. And this is, we could say, the first miracle, like Jesus did his first miracle in the, in the wedding of Canaan. Um, that was the first miracle in my life that I witnessed God do. Because my dad, besides being an alcoholic, uh, uh, would beat my mom, abusive, many other things that I cannot share um, He would say a sentence and six, five out of the six words were bad words. My dad didn't know how to speak proper Spanish or any type of language. I mean, all he would do is curse and curse. That's all I heard when I was a little girl. And when they went to this retreat and they came out, I remember thinking like, my dad does not say a bad word. Like I, I was 11 and I couldn't understand my dad was happy. My dad didn't drink. My dad, my dad can honestly, I can honestly testify for the glory of our good and merciful God. He had a life change of 360 degrees. And that was the first miracle in my life. So if you um, are, are having that situation at home or know of anyone, there is hope and that hope is in Jesus. So, um, but obviously, even though I was 11 and my parents started going to a group of oración, a prayer group, and they were um, restoring their lives as individuals um, and as a marriage. Unfortunately, my brother and myself, especially myself, because I had witnessed more and lived more, um, I was not healed. So um, <laughs> now I, of course, understand so many things now, but so at the age of 15, I, I just, I thought I was in love with some guy at church. So my parents would go to church and then this other family had their adult son and um, he started recording what we would just talk. And anyways, I thought I was in love. And one day he just told me, hey, do you want to come live with me? And I was like, sure, <laughs> literally at 15. And um, that's where a different type of chapter and journey began in my life. Um, because, um, as soon as I'd say like two weeks into living with him, he started beating me, slapping me, um, beating me up to the point where he would leave me submerged, passed out, um, in blood. And of course I got pregnant right away. 
And um, I had my first son at the age of 15. Um, by the age of 17, two weeks before turning 18, I had my, da my daughter, Jasmine. But during this whole time, um, I was okay with the beatings, going to high school. Nobody knew. My parents just thought I was living. I think they had an idea, but I, I ironically, this naive 15-year-old thought that because she had seen God do a miracle in her dad, that that was going to happen to me. And because, in a sense, I knew of God, I would pray at that age, and I would tell him, you know, when you turn 18, we're going to get married because I want to. I don't want to live in sin, and want, and I want to receive Jesus. And um, it didn't happen that way. Um, Many things happened, but um, I'm going to share that at the age of 16, 17, I tried to commit suicide twice. Um, in the bathroom, I um, took two bottles of pills because um, I just couldn't handle what I was living. And I couldn't tell anybody because since I was a minor, I knew my parents were going to put him in jail. And I didn't want my children to be without a dad, even though I was living the same situation that I was living as a little girl. And I basically thought I was kind of OK, I guess, because that's what I was used to, right? I didn't know any better. Anyhow, um, I call it a holy day. I even know what day it was. It was May 27th. Uh, my mom, who was by then a prayer warrior, had been fasting. She would always fast because she didn't want me living in the situation. and. Um, That weekend, or he had beat me up to the point where I passed out. And when I woke up, my daughter Jasmine was seven months and she was in the crib. And when I woke up, I remember like not knowing what had happened. And when I went and I ran to the room and she was in, in the crib. But then when I went to go look for my son Richard, who was three, had just turned three, um, he was behind a laundry basket crying. And he could barely speak, and he um, he said, "Te duele," and he touched my mouth because it was all full of blood, and just and I remember thinking, like that was my turning point. That was like, oh my goodness, my I can't do this to my kids. I don't want them to live this life. And I went to the living room, and that was one of the second miracles in my life. And I kneeled, um, and I said, "I." Re I know exactly what I told the Lord. I told him, I'm sorry for have been living in sin. I know this is not the life that you have and want for me. And this is definitely not the life that I want for my kids. So please allow me to stop loving this man. And I'm going to turn my life and I'm going to serve you, Lord. And I called my mom, who actually worked every day. But that day she had not gone to work. She said she had been fasting for three days. So with this, I also want to add that if you're having any type of problem with your children, do not despair. God listens to us mothers, us parents. And I called her, and, I, and the only thing that I told her, I said, Mom, I'm ready. And she said, I know. I know. And she picked me up, and I grabbed my children. And um, another journey began because, unfortunately, he wouldn't leave me alone. For two years, he um, would pop my tires. He actually beat me up at, in the street. I put him in jail. It was, it was a f horrific situation trying to get away from him because he wouldn't leave me alone. Um, he was determined that I was going to be his wife and that I was going to stay with him. But that's not what I wanted for my kids. Um, so then I graduated. I actually graduated with honors, guys. Two kids graduated with honors and then went to college. I was the statistic that doesn't happen, right? Working at 15, I had a job. I was supposedly being a housewife and I had two kids and I managed to do it. And um, driving under age at the age of 15, 16, doing what I needed to do. So at this point, second part of my life, <laughs> I start serving God and taking care of my kids. I went part-time to college, full-time to work. 
and I was in different ministries. And I started to pray because I would always say that I was never going to get married and just that was not part of my life anymore. Like I just so my mom would tell me, well, you know, just start praying for God to bless you with a husband. And I'm like, no, you know, that's OK. That's not for me. You know, I just want to dedicate my life to my kids and we're going to call it call it a day. Right. But I did. I started to pray because I didn't, I always felt so guilty. Oh, you know what? I want to say something. I want to backtrack. <laughs> and because this is very important. Um, when I was pregnant of Jasmine, my daughter, my second child at the age of 17, um, I actually had left him. I had left um, the father of my children because of the beatings and just many things. And um, when I was pregnant of her, I had gone to back to my parents' house. They had received me back, and I was, by then I was four months pregnant, but my mom, nobody knew, and my mom, I was very depressed, and all I would do would cry, and my mom thought it was because, of course, I was depressed because I had left, the, you know, Richard's dad, my oldest son, and so, um, but she didn't know. Nobody knew I was pregnant. How was I going to tell them that I was pregnant from this guy that I just left, right? So, um, my mom would take me to a therapist, to a PhD licensed therapist. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because we have to do our homework as parents. We have to do our homework as Christians. When we ever recommend anyone to therapy, you guys have to make sure that they are Christian based. Might not be Catholic, but at least Christian based because that lady, I don't know, I pray for her soul all the time because I literally can say that I was going into the devil's den, dungeon because I told her, of course, I was pregnant, and she, from the moment that I told her I was pregnant, for three months, guys, she kept torturing me, telling me that I needed to have an abortion. I would go to her once a week for two hours for three months, and I would come, and I would fight with her in the sense of arguing, and I would tell her, you know what, even though I'm only 17, but I believe there's a God, and I already have a son, I can't have an abortion, and she, was, and she would give me every reason under the sun to have an abortion, and I would go home worse and I wouldn't tell my mom, but it was a fight between my head and my soul of, and many times I thought about it. And she, it was to the point, listen, listen to this, guys. This is how the devil works. So you guys have to do your homework as parents or as anyone um, that you ever want to recommend to therapy. Two, not to say, which we'll get there, but um, she told me that because I was underage that she would tell my parents that we were going to a camp that I really needed to go for a weekend for a camp and that she was going to sign. Listen to this, guys. She was going to sign for me to have an abortion because it was the best thing for me. And that how could she live with herself knowing that a 17-year-old was going to have her second child two weeks before turning 18, right? And um, for the glory of God, um, I made the best decision of my life. I've made very ungood decisions in my life. But I can say that Jasmine has been the best decision in my life. And um, she's 20, 28, 28 now, <laughs> and um, engaged. And for the glory of God, um, my daughter many years ago also saved the life of a child because one day I was going to work and she told me, um, she told me, she was crying, and um, she's like, I have to tell you something. I thought she was going to tell me she was pregnant, honestly. <laughs> and I was like, it doesn't matter. Just tell me what's going on. And she's like, no, Mom. She's like, it's because I already told her that you're going to keep the baby. And I was like, what are you talking about? And then she's like, well, it's because she told me the name of her friend, very close friend that I knew I had grown up with her. And she's like, she's pregnant. She's like, but she wants to have an abortion. And I've been, I haven't slept all night. And I've been convincing her that she can't have an abortion. But I know you, mom. And, you know, you kept me and you love children. And I know, and I told her, I said that you're going to adopt the baby. So just have the baby and then you'll adopt the baby. And I was like, oh, okay. I actually was. I, I told her, I said, I, you know, I would. But for the glory of God, that's how God works. So, um, but obviously my life has not been a fairy tale um, because of, of, of many things that the Lord has allowed in my life. But anyhow, so I started to pray. Um, I was a youth coordinator for a few years um, at my parish and just working, being a, you could say a single mom. 
and I met um, I met this guy who I was the total complete opposite of what, by the way, I wanna say um, my children's father, may he rest in peace, he has, he's now in heaven. Um, um, so I, I met this guy and we dated for a very little time. And because I wanted to give my children or I wanted my children to have a father figure. And of course, because I wanted to have a partner to walk to sainthood and walk in the Lord, I got married, we got married. But right away, <laughs> I knew something was wrong. Literally, I knew something was wrong after I had gotten married. There were many signs and many things, and out of respect, my son's here, my youngest son, Joshua. Um, there's things I cannot share. But um, I was married for 17 years, well, for 20 legally, but 17 together. And um, like I said, there were a lot of signs. I was, we were, um, we actually served in a lot of El Sembrador retreats. Um, he would preach and I was raising, we were raising my kids. Then I had, we have two wonderful boys and a lot of things happened throughout that I knew something was wrong. And, um, but I just kept serving God and serving God. But a few years before there was, there was a big change. Um, I started to fast, I fasted for two years. And when I say two years, I mean two years. I would go to the Santissimo, to the Blessed Sacrament, before work, during lunch, and after work. And sometimes I would go just at lunch. That would be my hour lunch. I would go before. I was, I knew something very heavy was gonna happen. Like just, I just knew it. Like God was already talking to me, the Holy Spirit. This is how God works when you actually let him take control of your life. But I didn't know what was wrong because everything seemed fine, we could say. Um, and one day I woke up and just like that other holy day, I said, you know what, Lord, today is going to be the day. Holy Spirit, you are going to tell me what's going on with my husband or with this marriage. And I remember going to the Blessed Sacrament and crying and just, and I called my daughter and I said, you know what, um, I'm going home. I'm gonna go somewhere. Can you take care of the boys? And she said, yes. Um, because I, I do have to say that there was never arguments in 17 years. My children did not see one argument. There were none. I just can't, I can't share a lot of the things, but um, my children just saw two parents serving and loving God. That's what I can honestly say. Um, and when I got home, I opened the Bible and I read the passage where it says that the truth will set us free. And I prayed and I told him, you know what? It's today's the day. Like I need you to tell me what's going on. You know, I've been praying for two years now and I know something's wrong with our marriage. And um, he started crying and he said, yes, actually there has. He's like, I've been living a lie. And I said, what do you mean? You've been living a lie. He's like, yeah. He's like, um, unfortunately, I'm very sorry, but I never wanted to marry you. I've never loved you. I've never seen you as my wife, and I'm leaving you. And I said, okay. And I remember, like, not understanding what was going on. Like, my life had just flipped in that minute, and I just started to cry and pray and, and I told them, well, don't worry, you know, whatever's going on, I'm here, I love you and we're gonna pray and we're gonna get through this, you know, whatever it is. And I kept praying more and more and he just would tell me every day that he didn't love me and that he had been living a lie. And that's, um, like I said, unfortunately, I cannot share details. I cannot share a lot of the stuff, but, um, he, um, a week before he left, he talked to my parent. well, the night before, but he talked to our boys and he just basically told them that um, when two people meet and they fall in love, then they get married and they have kids, but that unfortunately he had 
believing a lie and he had to leave. So, um, and he told that to our priests, to my parents, to my brother, everybody that wanted to know and hear, he had unfortunately been living the lie. And I thought I was living in a sense a fairy tale Christian life that I always had dreamed of that home that I didn't have when I was a little girl. So of course my life flipped. And even though I knew of God and I was walking in God, um, depression had knocked on my door again. And this time I was serious about committing suicide. And I would just think about it and cry. And I would go to the Blessed Sacrament and just throw myself in there and be like, you know what, Lord, I can't, I can't handle this. I would just cry and cry. And I thought I was going crazy because I couldn't comprehend what was going on in my life. Like it just, everything had just changed. Um, I was in therapy for a year and a half and I visited more than seven therapists. I had talks with more than 15 priests for an hour, two hours. I talked to Malia as I, I was running amok. I was going crazy. Like people didn't understand that my life had flipped and I didn't understand how to get a handle of what was going on. Um, and I thank the Lord by his mercy that even though I would sometimes not sleep all night and just think of the letters that I was going to write to my kids saying that I was sorry because I just couldn't live anymore. I have to say, though, that in the midst of one of the worst pains that I have encountered um, in my life of betrayal and just, I mean, who, who, I mean, you hear of, of men being of unfaithful and just, or just situations, but how do you tell people that, <laughs> that your marriage ended because your spouse was living a lie? I mean, how do you comprehend that? How do you just, um, anyhow, um, there's more to the story, which I can't, like I said, I, I just really can't share, but, um, so it's been four years now for the glory of God. And in these four years that I stand here before you guys, all I can say is that I thank God with every cell of my heart, of my body, and with every beat of my heart for his healing. Because for someone that didn't want to live anymore, for someone that was bitter in her heart. I can stand before each of you guys and tell you that I have never been so happy in my life now. <laughs> I live a metanoia every single day now. It, God took very serious many, many years ago when I was a teenager, when I was a young adult. I would tell him all the time that I wanted to be a saint that I wanted to really walk and hold that cross. And sometimes I laugh and I turn around and I tell him, you took that very seriously because I really feel like that clay in the potter's hand because he continues to mold me. And through these last four years, I have healed of really even living metanoias, even serving in retreats, even I mean, and I'm not here to flaunt any of that, to be a coordinator for 10 years of, of all kinds of ministries and just God needed this. God wanted this to happen because I was hearing, I was like, Lord, man, you are just so perfect. I was hearing the worship song and where it says that he wanted to take everything that doesn't belong, that has taken his place because I can honestly say that I understand now after therapy, after healing that, um, the father of my children had became my God. That marriage was, I was determined. And it's so sad to say, but it didn't matter what he did to me unless my life was in danger or my children's, but I was not going to leave him. I never told him that. But not just was I madly in love with him, but he 
I felt like I was clinging on to this man that I guess took the place of my dad. And I understand so many things of myself now. And I was not going to leave my now, my second set of children, of boys, without their father. And it was, it was like, how do you explain to the community? It was, it was just so many, the devil, so many lies of so many things. And the healing process has been definitely very hard. It hasn't been easy at all. It hasn't been easy. And the Lord continues to mold me and mold our lives. Um, my mom a year ago got diagnosed with cancer and um, she's had four surgeries and I have been her caregiver. And it's taken us from one thing to another and the, the Lord has been preparing us because he knew he knew when it was perfectly time for me to endure my next cross, my next journey, because when I did want to die <laughs> four years ago, um, if I would have been diagnosed with what I'm diagnosed now, then I would have been like, oh, perfect. You know, <laughs> it would be a good way to go um, now. Um, but he waited for me to love life. <laughs> God waited for me to heal. God waited for me to be standing straight and holding on to that cross. Um, four months ago, actually almost five now, um, I was driving from the free and on the freeway and from one of my mom's surgeries. Um, and that night, cause I would stay in LA, but that time that surgery, I didn't stay. So I was driving home and I was just having an encounter with God talking to him and I did not hear auditorily. I didn't hear a voice, but I, in my brain and my heart, I heard the following words that I know that it's, a. Uh, uh, a lemma, a theme that God has placed in my heart and that I will live by and I pray that I live by for the rest of my life until he does take me and it's my time to go. Um, that say the following, anything that is for my salvation, my conversion, and for the greater glory of God, let it be in my life. And I remember thinking like, dang, like that's, 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 that's deep. And every day I could hear that. I could hear that. I could hear that. And, um, one day when I was getting a, a, a facial massage, because I was really stressed out with everything that was going on, um, I, my knee, let me backtrack a little bit. I, one day I had a dream, and before the dream was over, this man told me, you and your mom are going to have cancer at the same time. But in my dream, I knew it was an angel, and I was just like, that's weird. Okay. So then when my mom was diagnosed with cancer, I said, oh, like, it was just like, ugh, you know, I, I, I. God had told me. Um, I didn't say anything. And then um, when I was getting this massage, when she touched, when she massaged my neck, it hurt. Like it just, and I was like, yeah, I didn't say anything. And I remember getting in the car and feeling a, a lump on my neck. And I was like, okay, maybe I'm getting paranoid. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to leave it there. And a week went by, another week went by, and I would like touch it. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to touch it more. It's still there. And um, sure enough, I, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell anybody that I started getting testing. I started making, because my mom was already going to have surgery again. And everybody was concerned with her cancer. And just, she was going to start chemo and just everything. I didn't want to worry anybody. And so I didn't tell anybody. So I started taking this journey of going to the doctor and to the doctor. And I was reading the book of Job, St. Job. Um, in chapter 2, the night before, and I want to read it to you guys. Um, okay. So mind me, if you guys know the story of St. Job, he was tried very hard by Satan because God was very proud of St. Job, and Satan said, no, not with this one. So um, anyways, um, I'm not going to read it because it's a little bit long, but at one point his wife says, aren't you going to curse God? Because, you know, he had lost everything and he was sick. He was dying, basically. And he said, no, if we are going to accept the good that comes from God, we are also going to accept the bad. 
And when I got that phone call at work at five o'clock, it was like 5.02, I had just clocked out. And I heard the doctor, it was the, um, the, um, the endocrinologist, I just knew it. And he's like, Ms. Torres, are you, where are you at? And I said, oh, I'm just clocked out at work. And he said, okay, do you want to sit down? Or and I said, why? I said, I know what you're going to tell me. And he's like, yeah, unfortunately, you have cancer. And he's like, and it has metastasized, which means it has spread. I said, okay, okay, thank you. And then he's like, is that all you have to say? I said, yeah, glory be to God. And he's like, okay. And then I said, I'll talk to you later, doctor. And I remember the first thing that came to my mind was that, that scripture where she wanted to, the wife wanted St. Job to curse God. And I said, no, Lord, I will never curse you. Thank you for this. You have taken my, you had, you have taken my petition very seriously and I'm going to bear this cross of cancer in such a way where I just want your name to be glorified. So I have cancer guys, but I could tell you that that has been one of the best news of my life and it has flipped my life again, but in a different way, God has given me the gift of happiness and contentment that I can't even explain. People tell me like, there's no way that you have cancer. And I'm like, yes, I do, but it's okay. Like, don't feel pity for me. Let's just pray. Let's just pray and whatever be, it's for the glory of God. Because I do believe that whether I'm here or whether it's here on earth or whether in heaven one day, I will be cancer free for the glory of God. And I, the reason why I titled or wanted to title this, my testimony and this talk was Pray, Hope, and Don't Worry by um, words of Father St. Pio is because prayer, I want you guys to know that prayer is what has lifted me up in every moment of my life. Even when I was a young, naive 15-year-old to having to make the decision of having an abortion, to having to be in the hospital and kneel down because my son was overdosing at the age of 17 um, with ecstasy. And the doctor said, there's nothing we can do. And I kneeled in the room and I said, Lord, take me. And it, I mean, <laughs> I can literally write a book. <laughs> but anyhow, um, Joshi, you wanna pass out the paper, please, real quick? Okay, so just to finish, um, I wanna invite you guys to, to fast to go to the Blessed Sacrament, to pray the rosary. Mother Mary is my girl. She's my mama. She has been by my side forever. And, but she has been, how do you say palpable in English? She has been very, how do you say palpable? <laughs> uh, very, she has been very present in my life, especially in the last four years. Um, and I just want you guys to um, receive something from me, which is a white piece of paper to wrap up. Um, I want to, um, and you should be receiving a pencil. And the reason why you're receiving a, a, piece of, a white piece of paper and a pencil is because that piece of paper represents, look at it, that piece of paper represents you every single day. It represents you because it's your story. You get to write your own story every day. By the grace of God, he gives us free will, and we get to write our story, right? How we want our day to begin, how we want it to end, what choices we make, what we're going to eat. So we get to write on that white piece of paper every single day, right? But in order to do so, we need something to write with, right? You need a pen, but usually the best way when you're going to write is with the pencil because it has an eraser, right? If we mess up. But you know what that, that, that eraser represents sin or just mess ups that we have, you know, goof offs in our walk. But the, the eraser is the sacrament of confession, guys. When you guys look at that piece of paper and you're not happy and you're not giving the glory to God in your life, regardless of what it is, you can go to confession and you can erase that. God erases it. And he does not, he, does, he takes it off that piece of paper completely. But in order to use your pencil every day, what do you need? 
You need a sharpener, right? You need one of these, right? Okay. But in order to sharpen a pencil, I don't know if you guys, it has happened to you, but it's happened to me where you sharpen a pencil and you sharpen it too much where it breaks. Or you sharpen it too much and it's too pointy, so then it doesn't break when you sharpen it, but when you're going to use it, it just breaks off, right? Sometimes you, you can't get it exactly how you need it. And that's what God is doing with you guys. He's holding that pencil. He's holding your life. And the sharpening hurts. The sharpening hurts. And sometimes we end up, I don't know if you guys have, but having kids, um, you end up with different type of pencils, no? Like some without erasers. I have little ones. I even have like, I was today when I was putting on my makeup. I had this little bitty, bitty one. I really like this pencil, but you guys could tell that I really like it, right? Because it's to the verge of nothing. But I was looking at it, I was like, oh my God, I can use. And when I was sharpening it, same thing happened. Like it broke off and I was like, ay Dios mío, se me acabar. I better go get another one. But you guys can tell I really like it, right? <laughs> so this is our pencil. That pencil that you receive represents your life because throughout your life, God sharpens us, molds us so that we can write better on that piece of paper. And you guys have a choice of what you want to write on that paper. And I'm here to encourage you to read your Bibles, to actually live the greatness of being Catholic, Christian, Christian Catholics, to be able to go to the Blessed Sacrament, to receive Jesus. Because I could tell you that Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament has talked to me, has healed me. and. That's what has me standing here today with cancer, with my mom still having cancer. She was just diagnosed again, and she's going to have two more surgeries. So she'll be having six surgeries before a year. We actually, I have surgery, and I have myself surgery in two weeks. I have it on Friday, and my mom has it on Monday. And um, I am blogging my process. I will be blogging, God willing, my my chemo, my hair falls out, or just whatever God has. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's all for the glory of, of him. And I just, like I said, I'm, my testimony is not any more valid or more important than any of your guys's. And I just, I'm here to give all the glory to God for all the healing, for everything he has done and continues to do in my life. And that Praying, fasting, but also keeping up with your community is very important because um, people calling me at 2, 3 in the morning when I was just thinking of committing suicide, people that I had not even talked to, people from other states, hermanos in Christ, um, brothers and sisters in Christ that had not, that I haven't seen in years, but they had me on Facebook and they're like, I've, God's talking to me, you know, what are you doing? And here I'm like thinking of how I'm going to take my life the next day and the letters I'm going to write to my children. Um, and all that healing has only happened through prayer, through fasting, and to, to keeping up with my community. And all I want to do is offer offer this in the name of Jesus for my mom's healing and for the continuing healing of my children, for the salvation of those that don't know of God. See, we are privileged because it doesn't matter. I tell my kids all the time that it doesn't matter what happens to us. What's most important is how we react to what's happening. And for the glory of God, even with cancer, I'm going to go back to school and I'm going to become a therapist, guys. Because why? Because we need Christian Catholic therapies, therapists out there because we need people that are willing to say no more to abortion because we need people that have the grace of God that want to endure the battlefield that we are in and Nobody is ever prepared for any news or for in or for all these different sharpenings that God allows in our lives. But you do have control of what you want to write. And the only way that we can write properly and have a fulfilling life and at the end of the day, look at our sheet and be like, okay, this is not something that should have been there, but you guys can go. We can go as privileged Catholics to, to the sacrament of confession and that's about it. I mean, um, follow us in Incorrupto. I will be, like I said, be blogging my process of cancer, or the therapy, the um, chemo, the radiation, whatever they decide to do. And I do claim my healness if it's in a miracle or through the surgery, as well as my mom's. And now that estoy aquí para servirles, I'm here to serve you guys all for the glory of God. Amen.
Amen. We believe in healing, amen. Our God is a he- our God of healing, amen. Our God is a God of miracles, amen. Let's stand up right where you are. I just want to give one more quick testimony that um, so LA is a place of healing. I right myself had cancer last year, right? Remember? Now I'm cancer free. Amen. Amen. And I'm uh, Danny. Danny's mama has a testimony. Amen. About cancer. Amen. We see time and time again that God is on the throne. God is able to heal. We believe that God is in control. God is, is greater than any cancer. Amen. Amen. I want to take one more question. I want to ask one more question. Hey, I'm, I'm raising my hand. My, my hand is up. Has anybody ever, throughout your whole long life, ever thought about committing suicide? Anybody ever been through that before? People having their hands up. If you want to just look around and see, we are in a community of survivors. Amen. People, because of the grace of God, we're here. We did not give up. God has healed us through that. And this is a time of healing. This is a time of deliverance. This is a time of breakthrough. This is a time of hope. This is a time where God will touch you right where you are. To continue, it's also a time for us to outgrow where we find ourselves today. Like sister said, to get sharpened. Tonight tonight is the day of your sharpening. To sharpen up your prayer, to sharpen up your healing, to sharpen up whatever it is that you need. Only you know. I can only guess and what the Holy Spirit puts in, in, in my heart and every single one in, individually. But you know what you need to be sharpened in, especially God. And if this topic was touched today, it's because it's time. It's time to grow. It's time to gather up more strength. It's time to let go of the past that you probably haven't let go because it's easy to say I have moved on but yet again we're still talking on the past we're still living in that past we're still crying on that past if that's you tonight is the night of your deliverance the night of a new growth Today, that chapter closes. And like sister said, let God be your pencil tonight. Let God write the next chapter of your life. Let yourself go today. Do not hold back. Prayer, prayer. I invite you guys to the altar call to come into the presence of God so that God can do his will in your life. And if you do not know what to say, brother and sister, I just invite you just to simply say, humbly and very genuinely, Lord, I'm tongue-tied today, but you know what I need. I accept Whatever it is that you have for me. If I need deliverance, Lord, deliver me. If I need healing, heal me, Lord. If I need strength, give me strength. If I need guidance, give me guidance. If I need wisdom, give me wisdom. If I need courage, give me courage. What is it? It's not very hard to connect the dots. So brothers, In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of our mighty Lord, for the sake of your soul, for the sake of your walk, for the sake of those around you, for the sake of your family, for the sake of the future, 
In the name of Jesus Christ, I invite you with peace and love to the altar so that you can receive praying, so that you can receive the prayer.
Thank you. 
coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't take down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this night to pray for our sister, for giving her strength to share her testimony as it enlightens all of us to heal. Her healing has reached all of us here tonight. Thank you for making her heart humble enough to go through the story of her life. 
so we all know that we can heal from our past. She stated that we all live our own life. We all have our own story. But through Jesus, our Lord, we can heal anything in our way. She's the prime example of the power of love that the Lord has for us. As we embrace the forgiveness that he already gave to us, we just have to accept it. And as we get ready to end the night, I want everybody to join with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us the trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. To our beloved Mother Mary, we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, as, as we end one, this is what the power of testimony does. It, it allows all of us to be more grateful and let the love of Jesus in our life. Don't take for granted everything we have. Be grateful for what we have. as we get ready to to close the night for tonight let us just you know give us a couple of uh, minutes to or a few seconds to just reflect on the message that god had for us tonight i know we're all going through difficult moments difficult times in our life so let us just have a couple of seconds of silence to reflect on that remembering that God is so good his love is so wonderful it is through him that we're here today thank you Jesus thank you Lord thank you for your love thank you Jesus for creating me with so much kindness, with so much love, for showing me that I am worthy, that I do belong in this earth, that there is a purpose in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I love you so much, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. So as we get ready to close the night, we just have a few other announcements to go over for you guys today. Um, you know, 
first and foremost tonight before before we close this night tonight's been a powerful night in 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 the life that god has made us in his image and we are beings that when we praise and worship our lord good things can happen even in our darkest hours darkest moments look for god look for his mercy look for his grace Only he can define you. Nothing else can. And to close the night, um, we do have a couple of announcements. Uh, one of them is we do have our Heaven Bound concert on the 27th. I hope to see all of you there. So get your tickets, the, the donation. Uh, it's $20. You can buy it online. Uh, the whole lineup is on our Heaven Bound page. We got Rio Squad, Heaven Sound, our very own Danny Reese, plus a couple of more invitees that have confirmed. We also don't forget that on Solar, um, on, on the ESNE app, you can actually listen to Dick and Doug, Dick and Doug tomorrow, 8 o'clock. Actually, get up at 6 and then just turn on the app and you're going to hear everybody all the way to like 6 p.m. They they took over the whole radio already. So it's, it's yeah, it's a lot of shows. <laughs> so just make sure you do that. Is, do you have any other announcements, sister? Um, no, I kind of just wanted to add to the Heaven Bound. Uh, so LA is a ministry that will be promoting um, in the Heaven Bound, you know, and as a supporter of um, I would like to invite all of you guys to come here to the altar so we can do a little promo video, please. Um, just saying that we are heaven bound, Camino al Cielo, right? Because we all want to get to heaven. Amen. Oh, pues, I don't think so. God is going to be like, oh, no, sorry. Someone asked you, you guys want to come to heaven? And you guys were like, amen. So you guys stay there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's try that again. Right? Who wants to go to heaven? Amen. All right, so let's go. And so we can do this video, this promo video. Oh, and children are, uh, are free. So from 5 to 12, they are free. So, I mean, did I say that right? From, so yes, 12 and under. <laughs> 12 to I'm like, that didn't sound right. <laughs> 12 to under, um, they are free. And then 12 and up, $20 donation. And just to add to that, the donation is not for us. The donation is for two pro-life ministries that we're supporting, our Sisters of Mary and LAPS, which is a clinic who helps support women keep their babies. And we don't just say, oh, yes, let's keep your baby and that's it. No, we help them, we support them. And so we're going to, all of our donations that we're giving is to help those two ministries. All right, so our brother Walter is going to say, so we're late, we are, and we're going to say heaven bound, okay? So come over here, though. We want you all here. <laughs> we're just here practicing. <laughs> Atrás de Okay, these little ones in the front. Yeah. Okay, so we're, so we're going to say, so, so I'm going to say, we are so we're LA and we are, and then we all shout heaven bound, okay? Yeah. So let's practice. LA. You know? All right, let's practice. Let's practice. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we are so we're LA and we are. We are so early. And we are heaven bound. Woo! 
Okay, so we're gonna say it one more, one last time. But Walter is only saying we we are so LA. Okay, so we're not receiving. Yeah, we're not saying that because I know some of us were saying it. What? And we say we are heaven bound. Okay, Walter is saying we are so LA. So we let's not repeat that. All right, uno, my big moment. Okay. No pressure. All right, let me know. So you come here then. Yeah, you get it. Okay, ready? One, two, three. We are so we're LA. To, so you're trying to invite people to, so you're trying to invite people to, yeah, 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 so who wants to do it, like, you want to do it? I don't know what you want me to do. Uh, just, just an invitation to CDJ, we're so, we're from so, we're so, we're, we are, we, so kind of promoting ourselves. We are so, we're headed for CDJ. Yeah, something like that. We're heading to CDJ. We'll see you at CDJ. Looking for us on the table. All right. Okay, so I'll say, I'll say, we are so early, and we'll see you at CDJ. Yeah, All right, uno, dos, tres. We are. <laughs> All right, one, two, three. We are so LA, and we are going to see you at. <laughs>